kids cut all the doors. <laughs> you look at me like you crazy. Yeah. There's only what three hundred doors in this building, yeah. and there's twenty in this in this hall alone. I think.
Have you ever had to shoot anybody? No. Good for you. You're probably stern enough to get the point. Sorry? You're probably stern enough to get the point. You got that. Mm. Authoritative, commanding presence. They can see that I'm all geared up, hey? I think even without it, I, mean, no. I wouldn't question your authority. No. My wife's a mess. You any kids? No, thank goodness, not yet. Well, she said she was at home and she wondered why you couldn't return? Or? No, the first time that got there, I thought he was a police officer. And I asked the police officer if I could call my wife, and he said no. So I asked him to call and tell her. So she knew within five minutes that the eyewitness was kind enough to call. And she called my buddy Mark that was there. And he a little more. Did they do an uh, MRI or anything on you? No, she asked me if I wanted an MRI or a CT scan, and I s she asked why they didn't do one, and I said they just brought me, they said that they were going to bring me here first, and, you know, they washed my head off, and they felt my nose, and then they said they were going to bring me here first and then take me to CFR, and I didn't, it, uh, the acronyms, I didn't get them at that time, but... Mm -hmm. My doctor said if they didn't do it then, that I should just be cautious if I start vomiting or get nauseous or any loss of vision or blurriness. But other than that, there was, uh, if they cleared me at the site, then it was up to me if I wanted to pay for it. And those things add up quickly. So. You have insurance? Yeah, I do, but it's like, it it's like the, Bargain basement ones. Yeah. That's like you know a five thousand dollar copay before they pay anything out, okay. and then they pay like fifty percent of whatever your bill is. So yeah, it's well, that's not as bad as that. But we, I bought the um, the insurance for my family for it's called the Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's surgical and hospitalization plan, which means they only pay for surgeries and hospitalization, sure. which is fine. It's fantastic if you get hurt. But I only pay $150 a month for my oh, wow. entire family of five. Oh, wow. That is good. And um, just to give you an example, my daughter had uh, broken her arm. And she was in the hospital about three days. And she had surgery and she had slipped on the, the trampoline and instead of her elbow bending this way, it popped <sighs> this way and it busted some bones in her arm. And she had to get pins and stuff. And I think I was only out of pocket about $2,500. And it was like a $30,000 oh expense, like with all the bills that kept coming and coming and coming. So I felt like I have really good insurance. It's mm -hmm. just if I have to go to a doctor, i got to pay for it. But it's no big deal because, you know, I'm paying 150 a month where my um, fellow workers here who get it through the city are paying for a family, you know, upwards of five or 600 a month. So... I'm saving, you know what I mean? I'm saving $46 yeah. a month. So if I got to go to the doctors once or, like once or twice a couple times a year and pay a couple hundred bucks, I'm still way ahead. I thought municipalities had good health mm -hmm. insurance. Wow. It's expensive. So. My father's. So I, have. <laughs> and then I, do, I do the benefits card where you can. Oh, yeah. Health savings and, account. Yeah, health savings account. And I do that and use that to pay for the visits. Mm, that's a good idea. Tax-free. Take my daughter's braces. That's what my mom did for me. <sighs> my dad's uh, retired army. I'll never forget. They uh, they have you know really good insurance. And when I was a kid, they. Uh, they have a form at the pharmacy that you can fill out for like non not prescription medicine like Benadryl or hydrocortisone bandages right. stuff like that. 
I was a young kid and I took the form and I just started checking stuff off and I was like, yeah, I want that, I want that, I want that and I turned it in and they gave me a bag full of stuff and I went and I was all excited to my dad. And I said, Dad, look, all this stuff was free. I'll never forget. He said, none of this is free, George. I paid for this with my service. And I felt like garbage. <laughs> Someone's waiting for somewhere. Yeah. But that's good that he taught you that, you know, because a lot of these, a lot of people just think if someone else is paying for it, they don't care. It's free to them. Mm -hmm. you know? Go and take it all back. <laughs> that's why you'll have with like, people who have free Medicaid and stuff. They'll go to the emergency room because the kids cost them too much, you know, instead of going, okay, this, this isn't really the appropriate place, but they don't care. The doctor will see them and, the, you know, State will pay thousand dollars or whatever cost of the visit, and we'll they don't care. <laughs> he thinks I don't listen when I do. <laughs> you must have had a long day too. Yeah, I got back. I got out of here at one. Got back here at um. Got up at seven. Back at seven at one thirty. And then he got up at seven. Did you sleep uh, okay? Mm-hmm. I sleep fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I were you, I wouldn't, you know. But you have to learn when you do this just to not let things get to you. I mean, to me, it's just... It it's, sounds kind of cold to say, but it's just, you know, this, stuff like this happens, and we see it a lot, and if you let it get to you, you wouldn't be able to work here, you know. So it's just like, I don't know, you just learn to separate yourself from it, you know. Do you talk about it at home? No, not unless someone asks. That's what I heard. I go home and watch TV with my kids, play with my kids, but I don't ever talk about work unless they ask. If I have a particular question, I'll tell them. But if they say, you know, how was your day at work? But it was all right. That's at the end of it, unless they want particulars. How does it work? Like, you, you get called in as an investigator, and then you're on duty until the investigation is, like, the preliminary investigation is Yeah, we stay here until we have no more leads, and we go home, and or whatever we can, you know, to the point where there's really nothing else we can do at this point. Um, we can just come back in the morning. And then you have to come back. That's your next scheduled shift? Yes. You can't, Between like, tell them I was out to one? Well, they have to give you six hours between shifts. Oh. So if you get out of here at one, but you're scheduled in here, say your shift was supposed to start at 5 a.m., but you didn't get out of here till one, they have to give you six hours. Oh, okay. So they can tell you you have to be back in. It doesn't a lot of time when you're tired, but... No, by the time you get home... But your supervisor will work with you, you know, if you say, look, I'm really tired, and if there's nothing I can do between 5 and 8, I can start doing whatever I need to do at 8 to let you come in later and be the time. But at that point, you've earned the overtime, you don't want to lose it. So That's it's true. Like, you know? Yeah. It builds the pay. Were you an investigator when you worked at Detail? Mm-hmm. Oh. And I just do details to make extra, extra money. Did uh, Chief Lee put that email in your file? I don't remember seeing that. He might have. He might have sent something. He said he was going to. Oh, I mean, he may have put it in a file, but I don't remember. Who? Who? What did it say? That you went above and beyond, and you held on to the flyers, even though they were having. A no, I, don't, I didn't see that. He probably <laughs> put it in my file. Huh. That was nice of you to do. It was nice of you to take care of it. Uh, that was a fun party. That was, was it? easy detailing. <laughs> you paid and. Sitting in the party and they're feeding me. And Were they? Yeah, it was nice. It was a really nice family. They had good Spanish food. Oh, really? I thought they were Middle Eastern. Oh, whatever they were. That's right. You're right. They were Middle Eastern. That's right. They were Middle Eastern. They had, the food was good. Really? Yeah, that's right. Now that you say it, they were Middle Eastern. I was at a party with a black family the other day. Monday. And it was a nine-year-old birthday party. And that's a good one. Hi. That's a good one, Sanford.
This, I think I was last night. No, nope, you did not. No? Got a seat over there. Thank you, George. Yeah. I understand that you want to participate in a CVS Act. Yes, sir. Okay. You know what? I am going to grant your wish. On any medications? Uh, yes, sir. What kind of medication? You, oh, that's not. Oh, is that you drink that now, sir? Oh, okay, start with that. That's fine. Um, I take uh, Libra for my stomach. Okay. Any narcotics? Uh, I think Adderall is considered. Adderall, okay. So I'm not worried about Adderall. And Tamazepam? Tamazepam, okay. You got ADHD or something? Yes, sir. I do? Okay. Yeah. Hey, we're here talking because you had a really bad night last night. To say the least. Let me see the back of your head. Okay, from here doesn't look too bad. I'm sure I'll find anything bad it doesn't look very good. Okay, I, like I said, I'm a truck here on the same. Um, I am the CVSA operator. Matter of fact, I am the senior CVSA operator for the city of Sanford. Um, I've been doing these for quite a long time. And do you know anything about a CBSA? Yes, sir. Have you ever taken one? Uh, Apparently not. No. I'm sorry. I, I, I went to school for computer analysis and I just know like a computer stress analysis. Voice stress analysis. Oh. Is it right there? We we'll even put it right there for you so you can read it while I'm talking to you. Um, okay, you're right. It's, it's a uh, computer aided. Truth verification system. Um, I'm sure you know uh, polygraphs and all that kind of good stuff. Um, uh, this is basically the latest and greatest in, in truth verification. Polygraphs are great. I think they are wonderful, but some of them have, you know, everything has to take it someplace. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. First things first, let's get rid of the administrative stuff. Yes, sir. Okay, what I need you to do, I need you to read this. Okay, and I need you to fill in this. And if you agree with the terms, sign down there and date it. If you don't, say so. And then we'll talk. Is it's a computer. It's a 
Dell computer you see is nothing more than a Dell telephone computer. All right, nothing special about the computer. It's a computer that reads ones and zeros. That's it. Okay. What's special about it is a program. Okay. Um, the National Institute of Truth Verification, which should be on the front of it. Yeah, right, right there. Um, they're the proprietor of this, of the operating system, or the, the program, the software. Okay, what that software does is it has the ability to read the tones on your voice. Yes. Okay, there's different parts, parts of the voice. Okay, you have um, the AM and FM. FM is what you hear. Okay, when we speak, you hear FM. Um, the AM, for lack of a better term, is named AM. It has really no, no really functional um, naming of it. Um, just to make it easier for you to understand or for people to understand. Um, the AM rides on top of the FM, okay? Normal speech, your FM carries it, okay? And, and pretty much overshadows it. When, uh, when stress is involved, the FM diminishes. And what happens is, is uh, the AM rides on top and you can actually see it, okay? You say, well, that's all fine and dandy, but how can you, you know, you should be able to, to change it. Well, just like your breathing, okay, there's a part where you can breathe and you can, you can make yourself breathe, you can consciously breathe. And there's other times when you don't even think about it, you don't stop breathing, you just keep on breathing. Okay, that's what, that's controlled in your brainstem, okay? And that's the same way your voice is, okay? When you're not thinking about it, your voice is automatically regulated. But when you add stress to the factor that AM, rise on top of the FM and it, with the FM diminishing and then you can see it. Okay, that's what we're looking for. You can't change it, you can't alter it, there's nothing you can do about it except it's there, okay? And so that's what we're gonna be looking for. So what we're not looking for is I'm not really looking for you lying. Okay, what I'm looking for is your truthfulness and your level of stress. Yes. Okay. Um, and that'd be elevant in in the in the instrument when we roll the charts. Okay. Um, it's not invasive, okay. It's just a microphone that you put right here, and you talk. You know, you know, you don't got you don't have the bands around you and everything hooked up there and blood pressure cuff and all this other crap all over you. That's all it is, okay. It's it's nothing. It's very very uninvasive. Yes. Okay. Um, so with that in line, uh, in mind. Um, what I need to do is drop you down here to make sure that there's no residual stress in you. Okay, to get a, get a good chart, I need to make sure that you're calm. Okay, all right, the events of last night, okay, you can be in attack, the guy getting shot, okay, you being investigated, investigator Serino and Sergeant Smith and, and everybody, all this attention and all this rick and all right, you're stressed. Okay, now you're here at the station talking to us again, you're stressed. Okay, I understand that. My job is to bring you down to a level to where we can sit here and talk. Okay, bring all this out on the table, and then develop these questions. Okay, there's going to be nine questions, um, and we'll go over the questions before you'll know them all before we start, and then we'll go over it, and then we'll take the exam. Okay, yes, sir. Can that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Right now, where you say you're at as far as the stress level from one to ten, ten being the worst. No, you know, six, maybe seven. Okay, pretty high. I or yeah. mediocre because you're kind of getting enough. You know, it's like it's in the back of my mind. It's all right, all right, all right. Okay. You nervous about sitting here talking to to me at the station? Not necessarily. No. no. You came here on your own free will, no yes. doubt, right? Okay. Yes. Um, investigator Serena didn't say you're gonna come down here or I'm gonna thump you or anything like that. Okay. I'm gonna bring your eye out with a cigarette. And that's okay. Oh, he does that. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, so okay. okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start. And what I want to do is I want you, in your own words, I want you to give me the scenario from the start to finish. Okay. And I'm not gonna interrupt you. I hope, for the most part. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna dissect some stuff. Okay. Things that I think that um, I might have, have questions about. Okay. You see me writing it doesn't mean anything. Okay. I might write this to write. Okay. Um, or it might be something that I want to ask you later, okay? So don't, if you see me sitting here jotting or something, don't don't take it into offense. Sure. Okay? Okay. All right. 
I have one question. Okay. I can't really breathe out of my nose, so I have to breathe out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I drink water? During the time? Your mouth, you can drink as much water as you want. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, your nose broken? Yes, sir. Okay. So, to start from the beginning, about what time yesterday? About 7 p.m. Uh, I left my house to go to the grocery store and buy my groceries for the week. What store did you go to? Target. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving my neighborhood when I saw this guy um, walking slowly in front of a house, looking towards the house. Um, and I knew he didn't live there, so it made me a little suspicious. And then he kept staring around him, at me, and behind. And it arose my suspicion. And then he was, it was raining, and he didn't look like he was in a rush to get out of the rain. He didn't look like he was uh, hardcore, physical, like exercising, that like he was you know, running in the rain. He just looked out of place from what they've taught us in uh, the neighborhood watch. So I drove past him and I went to the uh, clubhouse and I called the non-emergency line. Mm -hmm. um, as I was on the phone with the non-emergency line, he walked past my car and I lost visual contact of him. Um, the operator asked me if I could get to somewhere where I could see or at least give them a direction of where he was headed. Mm -hmm. I said yes, so I pulled out and I drove adjacent to the clubhouse. And I was unfamiliar with the street name. The operator asked me what street I was on. And it's not the street that I live on, it's a side street that cuts through the neighborhood, and I told them I didn't know. And they said, we need to know. When I was at the clubhouse, I gave them the clubhouse address, and they're like, we need to know what house you're in front of. And I said, listen, if you come to the clubhouse, you can go straight left, and you'll see me there. Uh, at this point, the guy walked around my car, he had his hand in his waistband. I didn't hear if he said anything. My windows were up and it was raining and I was on the phone with um, the non-emergency dispatcher. And then he disappeared back through a cut through between the houses. Uh, while he was doing that, the operator asked me, they said, we need to know what exact address you're at. And I, all the houses I was next to, it was the back of the houses and they're townhouses, so mm -hmm. I didn't know the address. And they said, we need to know what street you're on or what address you're at. I think I, in the heat of the moment, I might have given them my street address. And they said, is that your home address or your where you're at now? And I said, I, I, that's my home address. And I got out of my car to look for a street sign so that I could at least tell them what street I was on. And there was no street sign, and I couldn't make out the house in front of me because there was a big pickup truck there. So I knew if I, I saw him walk through the cut through and then make a right behind other houses, I knew if I went straight and I didn't cut through where he went, that was the street that I lived on, Retrieve Circle. And I knew if I got to that street, I could tell them the exact house number and mm -hmm. street that I was at. So as I walked through, I looked to my right where he had gone through. Uh, the operator said, are you following him? And I said, yes. They said, we don't need you to do that. And I said, okay. And I walked through to the other end of the street to give him the address. And as I was doing that, I said, he's not here anymore, he's gone. And they said, you don't see him? And I said, no, he's gone. And they said, do you still want us? And by this time, I had gone to retrieve you circle. And they said, do you still want us to send a police officer out? And I said, yes. And they said, well, where do you want the officer to meet you at? And I said, just tell them to go to the clubhouse, make a left. I didn't give them a description of my car. And I said, I'll meet them back at my car. 
So I walked through again, and as I was about halfway through, uh, he appeared out of nowhere. And we saw the phone? No, I hung up. They said, we have an officer in route. And I said, okay, thanks. After he asked me if I wanted an officer there, he said, we have an officer in route. I told him to meet me in my car, and I hung up. Mm-hmm. And I put my phone away. And when I got about halfway to my car from the street, again, behind the houses in a dark area, I heard him say, you got a problem? And I turned around and I saw him, and I went to go for my phone and sing sh- and call 911 and said I'm not emergency this time. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess I didn't have my phone in the pocket that I thought I had it in. I had it in my jacket pocket, and I reached for my pocket, and I was looking for my phone, and he just punched me in the nose. And I fell backwards to the side, somehow I ended up on my back, he ended up on top of me, and he just kept punching my face and my head, and I was screaming for help. And he told me, shut the fuck up. And I kept yelling for help. And I got a little bit of leverage, and I started to sit up, and then he took my head and slammed it into the concrete several times. And each time I felt like my head was going to explode more than the last. I felt like I was going to lose consciousness and I, then I really, I started screaming for help and he covered my nose with one hand and his, my mouth with the other one and he told me, shut the fuck up and uh, I couldn't breathe, I was suffocating and all I could think about was I didn't want him to keep slamming my head on the concrete so I kind of shifted and squirmed my way out, not out from under him, but like to where, because the concrete was only, it was a sidewalk, and it felt like he only had my head on maybe a quarter of the concrete, and I could shift my way out and get onto the grass, where if he was slamming my head, it would just hit the grass and not the concrete. But when I shifted, my jacket came up and my shirt came up and exposed my firearm. And that's when he said, he like sat up and looked and said, you're gonna die tonight, motherfucker. And I felt him take one hand off my mouth and slide it down my chest. And I just pinched his arm and I grabbed my gun and I aimed it at him and fired one shot. He kind of sat back and said, you got me here, you, you got me, you got it, something like that. And I thought he was saying that he heard the shot and that he was giving up. So I pushed him off me and I don't remember if I pushed him off me or I pushed him back. Either way, he, I ended up on top of him, straddling him. He was up uh, face down. And when he was hitting me in the face and the head, I felt like he was hitting me with something in his hands. So I thought he had a weapon and I grabbed his hands and pushed them away from his body. And I said, stop, I said, stop, just don't move. Mm -hmm. And he was saying something like, like, ah, ah, and cursing. I said, stop, don't move. And then somebody came and they had a flashlight and I thought it was a cop and I said, I still had my gun in my hand as I was holding his hand out. And I said, uh, are you a cop? And he said, no. And I said, he said, I'll call them. And I said, I don't need you to call them. I, need, I already called them, they're on their way. I need you to help me restrain this guy. And he said like, I'm calling the police, I'm already on the phone with them. And I got up off of him because he stopped struggling I thought he just like stopped struggling, and then I I holstered my weapon. And I saw another flashlight, and I said, "Are you the police?" Because I, I had blood all over my face and my eyes, mm-hmm. and the flashlight. It was dark where I was, so the flashlight was really bright. And I said, "Are you the police?" And he said, "Who shot him?" I said, "I did," and uh, I put my hands above my head like that, and I don't remember if he told me to 
and turn my back to him and walk back towards him. But I turned my back to him and I said, I did. And I raised my jacket and I said, my gun's right there. I made, I think I told him a few times, my gun's right there, it's right there. And he said, I know where it is. Just keep your hands on your head, don't move. I said, can you just, just take my gun? And he said, I'm taking care of it, just don't move. So I stopped, he handcuffed me. Uh, he took my hands down and handcuffed me. Oh, that's when he brought my hands down. I said, my gun's right there on my right side. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want him to think that, you know, I was gonna grab for it or something. So he put my hands behind my back, handcuffed me, and then he took my gun. And uh, I think it was the same officer that took me to his car. And paramedics got there. They went to check on him first. And then they came over and uh, poured peroxide on my head, on the back of my head, felt my nose. Um, and they told, I don't remember if it was a police officer or another EMS guy. They said his nose is broken and he's going to need one, probably two stitches on the back of his head. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and they said, uh, well, we're going to take him down for questioning. And uh, somebody said, should we take him to questioning or CFR first? And they said, no, we'll take him to the station first. And I didn't realize at the time CFR was Central Florida Region, the hospital. And I just got back in the back of the car and they brought me here. Okay. All right, so that was it. Were you on a phone at the time um, when uh, uh, he was beating you? No. Okay, so there was no communication between you and the call center at that point? No. Huh? I'm sorry. There was a guy that I couldn't really see because, like I said, there was blood in my eyes, mm -hmm. and I saw somebody looking out through the sliding glass door, and I said, help me, help me. And I think he said, I'm calling 911. But the guy was beating me in the head and the face, and but he might have been so on the phone. Possible with bystander there? Yes. Okay. He might have been on the phone with 911. I don't know. But I was not communicating with the police at that time. Because I 
where I was parked, my headlights were lighting, illuminating, mm -hmm. and I saw him turn down the... And by the time I was on the phone with the non-emergency, mm -hmm. by the time I got to where he was at, I felt like he had already made his way. I've called non-emergency probably a dozen times, and mm -hmm. they these guys are known just to run. As soon as they get suspicious, mm -hmm. they run and they know the neighborhood back and forth, and mm -hmm. they just disappear in between houses mm -hmm. within seconds. Mm -hmm. So I kind of walked and I, I looked around the corner and he was gone. So I was, that's why I told him, uh, not emergency, he's gone. Okay. What was this guy wearing? Uh, gray hoodie and I don't remember if they were gray pants or like stonewashed denim pants, I think. Denim pants? Pardon? Denim pants? Uh, no, like, uh, yeah, like denim, but like stonewashed. I think they were light colored. They might have been jeans. Okay. And he was a black man? Yes, sir. By all thoughts? Um, um, five, eight, nine. It was five eleven, I'd say. It's a six foot. Okay. When you're laying on the ground, you're laying on your back, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's when your jacket came up and he saw that your gun, right? Yes, sir. Your gun on your left side, right side? My right side. Okay, so your gun's on your right side. You're, where were your hands at? Uh, trying to keep his hands okay. away. And then you felt, what did you feel next? His hands slide down my chest. He took one, he had one hand on, his, uh -huh. on my mouth and one hand on my nose, and he took one off, and that's when he said, you're gonna die, motherfucker. And I felt his hand going down my, the side of my mm -hmm. chest, and, so he felt something like this? Yeah, okay. and brushing. And to be honest with you, the whole time I forgot that I had the gun. Mm -hmm. When he said that I was going to die, and then I felt him brushing, I, it automatically clicked that he was going for so my your gun. hands are up here defending yourself. His hand's going down. Yes, sir. Were you both your hands on the weapon? No, sir. Okay. Where was his hand when you went to retrieve the weapon? One hand was going towards the gun. He took it off my mouth. Right. And I was trying to get his hand. He was suffocating me, so I was trying to get his hands off of my face. Mm -hmm. So when I felt his hands, he let go of my mouth, so I wasn't trying to do anything again mm -hmm. with my right hand. So I grabbed my gun, and I don't know if he did it at the same time or what the case was, but I got to it first. Okay. And then how did you come to fire upon him from that position? Because you're laying down like this, okay, on your back, right? Yes, and then you just bring it out of the holster and straight up like this? Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't, like, try to pu push it into him or anything? No. You just fired it from almost, like, from the hip? I think I made sure that it wasn't because my hand was in the way. I made sure it was past my hand because his other hand was still on my face. Okay. So, so I made sure it was Was he that far away or he's right up on no, top? No, no, no. He was, he was like putting all his weight on my nose and my mouth, okay. trying to suffocate uh -huh. me. So he was like creating a crevice with his body. Uh -huh. And then he like, when he slid to go for my gun. Did he go for your gun with his left hand or your right hand? Stopped trying attacking you. 
he gets, he sat back and he said, you got me, or you got it, whatever. Sure, it all happened just like quick too. It felt like an eternity. <laughs> Sorry about that. No. It's cool. They always call it. Okay. Um. And I, I thought the police were there. They were going to be there. They, so it felt like it took forever. Yeah, that part goes so forever. I've been there before. Not in the situation you've had, but it takes, seems like it takes forever for you know, somebody to get there when they're really long. When, when in reality, it's only probably a couple of minutes. Okay. Let me, I'm going to step out for a minute. Yes, sir. When I come back, we're going to start developing questions. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, you need to use the restroom or anything? Uh, if I could just get more water. You need more water? Sure. Oh, um, it's from the restroom. Yeah. You can. Good. Give him a Oh, it's right there. Yes, and then just come back and sit down. Okay.
Okay. Okay. There's going to be nine questions. There's going to be nine questions. Okay. There's going to be nine questions. Okay. Um, we got three types of questions. All right. We have irrelevant questions, which are everyday questions that should should impose no stress. Okay. They're they're very benign. Um, is your name George? Is today Monday? Um, is the month is this the month of February? Are we in the city of Sanford? Uh, am I wearing a watch? Okay. Okay. Um, very benign questions. Should not elicit any stress whatsoever. Okay. You don't have to lie. They're going to be yes, yes or no questions. Okay. Then we have control questions. Okay. Control questions are there for a very specific purpose. Okay. They're just they're there to see what you look like when you do lie. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you two questions that I want you to purposely lie to me. All right. Those questions are, is the color of the wall green? And you're going to say, you're lying to me. Uh, no. Right, you're going to say, no. Okay, so I want you to remember that. Is the color of the wall green? No. Okay. The other one is, uh, I'm going to preface it with, you were driving last night on your way to the store, correct? Which you never made it, right? Yes. Okay. So therefore I know you drive, you have a driver's license. Okay. At some point in time in your life, I'm sure you've been stopped by the police for speeding. Yes. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to remember that situation when you were driving and then you first figured out that you were getting pulled over by the police or you first saw that cop. That feeling you got inside you, that oh shit feeling, um, your nerves went through the roof, um, your palms got sweaty, um, your throat got tight, okay, your heart started pounding, okay, you started breathing heavy, you got real nervous. Do you remember that? The way you felt? I want you to remember that when I ask you this question. Have you ever driven over to post a speed limit? And you're going to tell me? Yes. No, you're going to tell me no. 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 Okay. You're going to lie to me again. Two questions, you're going to lie to me. Okay. All right. Is the color of the wall is green? No. Okay. Have you ever driven over to post a speed limit? No. Okay. Very good. Remember this. Okay? Okay. Got it? Yes. Okay. And then we're going to ask you this. Okay. These are the relevant questions. These are the questions I want to know whether you're telling me the truth or not on, okay? Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Okay. Since you don't know, you don't know this guy's name, can you call him the guy? Then I'll call him the guy. You good? Yes, sir. Okay. The other one is, did you confront the guy you shot? No. Okay. So both those, that one would be enough. The other one's going to be a yes. Correct. Okay. Make sure I got it right. All right. That's it. That's all nine questions. Not bad? No. Okay. All right. What I want you to do, is that your own problem? Yes, sir. Okay. What you do is I want you to take that chair. Yes, sir. Turn it face on that wall and have a seat.
Alright, first what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the machine. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to put on auto, auto calibrate. And we'll see how it looks. Okay, I want you to give me a yes. Yes. Give me a no. No. A yes. Yes. A no. No. A yes. Yes. A no. No. Another no. No. And one more. No. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Is your name George? Yes. Is your name George? Yes. Is the color of the walls green? No. Is today Monday? Yes. Did you confront the guy you shot? No. Is this the month of February? Yes. Were you in fear for your life yes. when you shot the guy? Hold on. Let me finish the question. Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Are we in the city of Sanford? Yes. Have you ever driven up to the posted speed limit? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. That was nine questions. Wasn't too bad, was it? No. Did it shock you every time you said something wrong? No. Okay. Was Was there anything that got you? No, sir. Okay. You can kind of turn it. I was, we're, not, we're not done yet. Go ahead and take it for us. Oh, I wasn't sure about the watch question. I didn't know if that was one I was supposed okay. to Remember, I don't have a watch. Mm. Okay. I sent you this question. Also, like I told you, don't, don't draw out your nose. I'm okay. sorry. This is straight oh. no. Oh, right. Not n no. no. It seems like you were uncertain on a couple questions. Just remember, yes or no. Okay? Yes. Okay. That was a practice chart. <laughs> what it is is um, what we do is we always do <coughs> a second chart. The reason why is, remember I told you stress? Yes. Stress is a big deal? Yes. Well, what we do is to re this situational stress. Okay, just you being hooked up to, to the, the instrument, me reading into your soul, um, is causing stress on you. Okay, and it shows up on the, on the charts. So what we do is we run you through the questions. Okay, it's going to be the same questions again, um, and that's about it. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to run it one more time. Remember the control questions, which are: Are the walls green? And have you ever driven over the speed? Okay. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. Wait for me to finish asking the question completely. Okay? Okay. All right. You'll be all right. Is your name George? Yes. Wait for me to ask. Finish asking a question, please. Is your name George? Yes. Is the colors of the wall green? No. Is today Monday? Yes. Did you confront the guy you shot? No. Is this the month of February? Yes. Is this the month?
month of February? Yes. Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Are we in the city of Sanford? Yes. Have you ever driven over the posted speed limit? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. We're all done. You can take that off and you return to your seat over here. Perfect timing. This is your last episode? Um, probably three notes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this is. You say they're in here. They are blank. They are probably three. No, they are blank. Yeah. You go over and hang with him? Nope. I am done. Huh? I am done with him. Wonderful. All right. We are heading back to his house then. I can tell you, Christian, I sent those two out to start canvassing the neighborhood again, see if we got anybody to see anything or do anything. George. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Thanks for using one. Hopefully I never see you again. <laughs> That's always a good thing for the police.